Hi, this is Ratem Nazar, Peter Taiti and Manos Prilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting case 111 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating sequential troubleshooting for achieving final success. The patient was a young man with a previous coronary bypass craft surgery who had recently undergone PCI of the LAD and the obtuse marginal. However, he continued to have a lifestyle limiting angina and was referred for PCI of a right coronary artery chronic total occlusion that was the only occluded vessel. Dual injection demonstrates a clear proximal cap, immediately distal to a fairly large acute marginal branch. The lesion length was long, 60-70 mm, diffusely diseased PDA, diffusely diseased right posterolateral branch. There were some septal collaterals as well as epicardials from the circumflex into the posterolateral. And as a result, we were planning to start with undergrade wire escalation, followed by retrograde because of the bifurcation of the distal cap, leaving undergrade dissection reentry as uh, a last resort. We decided to use a femoral radial axis. However, after reaching the ascending aorta with um, a 7 French uh, EBU guide that was advanced through a right radial 7 French slender sheath, significant spasmo care that prevented us from either advancing or withdrawing the guide catheter. We initially gave nitroglycerin through the sheath uh, as well as sub-Q for the nitroglycerin. We placed warm blankets on the arm and we gave heavy sedation with versant and fentanyl. However, the spasm was so strong could not move the catheter at all. We then obtained left femoral axis and actually advanced the catheter all the way close to the origin of the radial artery and we gave locally nitroglycerin and verapamil also without success. We called anesthesia and we gave propofol for sedation also without success and we even gave rotaglide through this multipurpose catheter but we were still unable to move the entrapped guide catheter. Once again, we gave nitroglycerin, verapamil, nicardipine, and rotaglide, and we even prepared for starting general anesthesia. But as a last resort, we inflated the blood pressure cuff for five minutes, and after that, that caused uh, enough um, post uh, ischemia dilation that we were then able, with difficulty, to remove the radial guide catheter. And here's an overview of the various steps the warm blankets, the local sublingual nitroglycerin, heavy sedation, intraarterial vasodilators, propofol, and then the blood pressure cuff inflation that finally led to success. So here we are again trying to do the procedure. This time we're engaging the right coronary artery with an AL1 guide catheter that uh, provided very good support. And this is the left. Um, uh, guide catheter, it's another 8 French guide catheter advanced uh, through left femoral axis and that was used to engage the left main. We did different views to demonstrate the collaterals. There are some septals going to the PDA and some epicardials going to the right posterior lateral. We initially did undergrade wire escalation, trying with various guide wires uh, through a Corsair Pro microcatheter. But unfortunately, the guide wires, including a Pilot 200 and a Gaia Second, kept entering into an acute marginal branch located inside the occluded segment. So after multiple attempts and after inability to redirect the guide wires, we decided to attempt retrograde crossing. The septals are safer than the epicardials, and that is why we started with uh, a septal branch. After multiple attempts, we were able to advance a guide wire which seems to go in the right direction, but dual injection showed that actually the wire entered into the same acute marginal branch that had been entered from our undergrade guide wires. We had therefore removed this. We, travel, we tried once again for undergrade crossing, but we were unsuccessful, and we decided to attempt retrograde using the epicardial collateral. The collateral was originating from the distal circumflex at a tight angle of approximately 9 degrees and had significant tortuosity as well. 
we did have some difficulty entering into the distal circumflex but eventually after using various guide wires and using a balloon for blocking uh, the branch of the circumflex we were able to advance uh, the guide wire into the distal circumflex unfortunately we were not able to advance a microcatheter over it and uh, finally after a lot of attempts we were able to get a wire into the circumflex and then get a, a caravel into the distal circumflex unfortunately the angle was very acute it was 90 degree angle and caravel did not do it and that is why we removed the caravel and inserted a supercross 120 which is a pre-shaped microcatheter that assumes a 120 degree distal bend after using that as well as a suo or three guide wire we were able to slowly make progress into the epicardial collateral originating from the distal circumflex which um, we were then able to cross all the way into the right posterior lateral branch we then however have a had a difficult challenge which was inability to advance the wire retrograde it did uh, it kept on going into the right posterior lateral branch instead of taking the course going backwards towards the distal right coronary artery we tried multiple different wires we tried multiple different projections but once again we could not advance the retrograde guide wire retrogradely into the right um, distal right coronary artery as a result we decided to leave it as a marker into the right posterior lateral branch and came back on the undergrade direction again we do have a guide wire into this uh, acute marginal branch and this time after multiple attempts we finally used a Hornet 14 guide wire that um, finally took a different course and entered the distal circumflex as we confirmed with a dual injection and then we changed it for a Pilot 200 which now seems to be dancing in sync with the distal right coronary artery suggesting that we are actually moving in the right direction we removed the pilot, knuckled the guide wire, hoping it was going to go to the right posterior lateral, but unfortunately went to a different branch. We used a dual loop microcatheter, and we were then able to advance a different guide wire, which this time did take the course and uh, went into the right posterior lateral, which was being marked by the retrograde guide wire. So, dual loop microcatheter can help us uh, do these um, maneuvers. And then we did re-entry using the Stingray balloon. We did um, the stick and swap technique with the Gaia second to stick and the Pilot 200 to swap. Of course, here re-entry was facilitated because we had an excellent marker of where the true lumen was from the retrograde guide wire. And we were able to successfully re-enter into the distal true lumen. And this is an overview of the steps we took undergrade wire escalation didn't work retrograde through septals retrograde through epicardials epicardial collaterals then undergrade wire escalation again and finally dissection re-entry and use of the stingray system to successfully cross into the right posterior lateral branch after predilatation we placed uh, several stents all the way from the right posterior lateral to the mid right coronary artery restoring timmy 3 flow and uh, an additional stent was placed in the mid right coronary post dilated IVUS was done to confirm good stent expansion and all this was achieved using on the retrograde guide catheter the divert plus a system to reduce contrast and actually that uh, reduced contrast by approximately 43 percent down to 240 mls providing a nice final and geographic result with timid three flow into the right posterior lateral and even into this fairly large acute marginal branch that was the location of our wires entering during undergrade crossing attempts multiple lessons from this case the first one is that uh, radial spasm can be difficult to treat and it is important to have an algorithm vasodilators are part of that warm blankets heavy sedation potentially giving propofol but one should not forget uh, the value of um, inflating a blood pressure cuff into the in, uh, arm that has the radial spasm 
this uh, may cause ischemia induced vasodilation and that was key in our case to relieve the spasm and allow us to retrieve the trapped guide catheter. The second is the importance of changing strategies. We did have multiple back and forths between undergrade, retrograde, undergrade dissection re-entry. We used actually a creative combination of the retrograde wire being the marker of the true lumen and doing the sexual re-entry to enter into that distal true lumen. The Super cross microcatheter was very useful for ent entering this very angulated epicardial collateral from the circumflex. And finally, we're seeing that with the newer X ray machines, X ray dose is no longer the limiting factor in many cases. However, the contrast volume can become very high and become the limiting factor. This is that is why it is important to use as little contrast as possible. And using the Divert Plus system, one could allow less uh, contrast administration during the case. Thank you.